Hello on the Rockers. We are kicking off the holidays with Olivier Award winner Leslie Margarita from Stage and Screen chatting about her holiday show at Pasadena Playhouse with our guest co-host Michael Ferreira giving us the hottest shows to see this Broadway this winter with me, your favorite host with the sassy most. Raise a glass with the drinks begin. It's on the rocks. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On the Rocks. Fasten your seat. It's going to be a bumpy night. Lord have mercy, buns and bows and pantyhose on the rocks podcast, the place where we're too glam to give a damn. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at On the Rocks on Air and on Facebook on the Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email, book me for a pride, wedding, funeral, quinceanera, Brits. I don't care, I'll show up. Info at on the rocks radio show.com. Also send us your questions, your guest requests, and your guest questions. We got a lot of questions today. Uh, the show is presented by Straw Hut Media. You can watch and or listen to now our over 330 episodes at on the rocks radio show.com for free. You can watch us on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV on the Outa.tv app, Facebook Watch if you're still on Facebook, streaming with pride on SVTV and on Channel 31 on the East Coast. Why the East Coast? I don't know. Uh, we proudly tape at UBN Go Studios, your one-stop place for podcasting. All right, let's get the show on the road. Returning to On the Rocks, my guest co-host today, Michael Ferreira, has over 20 years experience working uh, in the LGBTQ plus nonprofit community. Among his accomplishments, he started a youth mentoring organization called LifeWorks that is approaching its 20th anniversary. I cannot believe it's been 20 years. Uh, he worked in the foster care system with thousands of LGBTQ plus youth and advocated successfully for their equitable treatment nationwide. And as an executive director, he led the effort to raise almost $5 million to fund an AIDS monument in West Hollywood that will break ground next year. He's currently part of a new organization called Out Athlete Fund uh, that will help support LGBTQ plus elite athletes as they train for collegiate, national, and international competitions while providing a safe and inclusive space for the athletes and fans to gather and experience those competitions competitions live. Now, theater-wise, Michael uh, had an early career in the theater from the age of seven and has continued his love and support for theater by keeping it central in both his personal and professional lives. And he truly credits the performing arts for saving his life in his teens and 20s, which is a story I'm sure a lot of us have gone through. He has seen just about every Broadway show every year and has rubbed elbows and probably other body parts with numerous personalities <laughs> from musical theater. Please welcome back Michael Ferreira. Hey. <laughs> So you toured with a group called Up With People. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some people don't know Up With People, but a lot of people know Up With People. Yes, certainly of a particular age, yes. What, what was it? So it started in the 60s, and it was uh, basically the idea that uh, young people are really responsible for most social justice change. And, um, and so if you could gather 100 people from a bunch of different countries and put them in a cast and not worry about whether they were particularly talented or not, you could put on a show that and tour it around the the world and we went um, basically we went to a town every couple of days did our show took part in community service projects during the day we stayed with host families and we did that for a whole year and so it was all of us were 18 to 24 you know <laughs> together for a year and and that was in 1987 and I actually just got off the phone with one of my friends from that cast yesterday and we're all still in touch so it's been a life-changing experience but we really did we got to we we performed uh, 200 shows a year oh my god yeah so it was a lot and that age group is a little dicey age 18 to 24, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have some, some, some stories. Yes, traveling on buses together, staying with host families together. Yeah, you know, you're, you're not supposed to have any sexual relations during the year, but you can just imagine. 18 and 24? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, and every year you go back to Broadway, and mm -hmm. you literally, all you do is go see shows. Yeah, we go for, f I go with three of my friends, and sometimes other, there's other guest stars. And uh, we were there for about five days, and, uh, and we see probably six shows every time so there's a one day where we're doing all in the matinee and dinner yeah. and then the, the night show but yeah it's just a blast um, and like I said you've and I, I'm not exaggerating when you've met just about everybody on Broadway who's been one of your favorite uh, meetings 
oh boy, you know, like, um, I, you know, you know, I go on the gay cruises, the Atlantis cruises, and and uh, was on for a week with uh, Patty Lupone, and uh, you know, we've had lots of conversations about Patty over the years, and she's, Many. she's just so, I mean, she just let loose, you know, even yeah. more so than she normally does. Well, she was with her gays. Yeah, yeah, she can say whatever she wants to say, and everybody just hangs on every word. Yeah. Um, Michael Cerveris got to go on a cruise with him last year on the Broadway cruise, uh, and he's just such a delightful person, so deeply talented. And um, and then you know like there's a new the new person that I just met Jelani Remy who's in Back to the Future now and you know he's a kind of a new star although he was in Lion King for a number yeah. of years but um, but you know he's an incredibly talented and such a good guy and yeah <laughs> and it's such a small world because you and I were at brunch yesterday and I'm like oh I'm having some more Broadway people on the show later this <laughs> You're month like, from Back to it's the him. Future I'm like Jelani that's him <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he will be on the show in, in a couple of weeks so that's such a small world and, it's so funny yeah and, and uh, you know now I like I was telling you and we'll talk about it a little later that uh, you you know, I have friends in three shows now on Broadway, and it's like so crazy to yeah. like. You know, I was on stage with one when I was younger, and now she's in my, and Wicked. You know, like that's just so fun to see yeah. people still working and being so great. Well, and it's it's good to see Broadway th- thriving a- a- again. Mm-hmm. I know we were Absolutely. all a little scared uh, during COVID. What yeah. was going to happen? Now the problem is they don't have enough theaters to bring all the shows yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that because um, we are going uh, towards the end of the show. We're going to get your top five picks of Broadway if you're traveling and you need to go see a show. These are the top five shows you should consider. Absolutely. All right. Um, (laughs) The Tony Award winning Playhouse, uh, Pasadena Playhouse, which is the official state theater of California, has staged thousands of original productions since its founding in 1917. Uh, Returns this holiday season with Holiday Spectacular December 14th to the 23rd and we have one of the stars, one of our faves, Leslie Margarita. Um, Let's let's take a look at, at the little promo for a holiday spectacular. Get ready to slay. Hey, please welcome Leslie Margarita, returning to On the Rocks. Um, she's so excited to be back at Pasadena Playhouse for this year's Holiday Spectacular. Having last been seen virtually, and we talked about it last time she was on, uh, on the Playhouse production of You I Like, which was filmed during COVID. So that was an interesting experience. Uh, she won the Laurence Olivier Award for her West End debut in Zorro the Musical, originated the roles of Mrs. Wormwood and Matilda, um, and Mona Kent in Dames at Sea on Broadway. And off Broadway, she received Drama Desk, Lorto, and uh, Outer Critics Circle nominations for Who's Holiday, Emoji Land, and A Sith of Time. Uh, and her TV credits, by the way, uh, including recurring and guest starring roles on Minx, The Fairly Odd Parents, The Rookie, The Crew, Raven's Home, Homeland, Instinct, Seven Seconds, and at Elementary, just to name a few. And on film, she can be seen, uh, seen on HBO in The Many Saints of Newark and on Netflix in Opening Night. And her voice can be uh, heard on several animated films and shows, including Fox's House Broken, Disney Cinderella 3, Nickelodeon's uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, um, and add to that a myriad of regional theater credits, including leading roles in Dan Yankee, Guys and Dolls, The Flamingo Kid, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Kiss Me Kate, Man of La Mancha, Little Shop of Horrors, and Spam Lot. And her album, Rule Your Kingdom, is available from Broadway Records. And I highly recommend you um, you download that and stream it. Please welcome back <laughs> Leslie Margarita. <laughs> There we go. There we go. <laughs> Cheers, sweetie. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Okay. Um, so I just have to say, um, this is your only day off, and so we are so honored mm. that you are here. Because um, I know, ha- as an actor, having the one day off, it's like I got to do laundry, I got to sleep, yeah. I got to you know watch Judge Judy. Like I got things to do, <laughs> um, and you're spending it with us. So I'm I'm so excited. Um, we're gonna here. We're going to talk about the holidays. I want to know, what were the holidays like for you as a kid? What was going on? What were some of your family traditions? Oh my gosh, I um, am a huge Star Wars nerd. Yes, I heard. As a child, (laughs) I always got Star Wars toys instead of Barbies. Um, And it was huge. Like, Christmas to me was massive. And we were just talking about my family and I. There was one Christmas, I grew up on a ranch, on a cattle ranch. And we had a cellar in our ranch house. And my mom had gotten me all of these strawberry shortcake dolls. And there was a flood in the cellar, and all I can remember is my mother screaming, like, get the toys, get the toys, and I wasn't 
supposed to know. And so my father was screaming, this goddamn bootcamp! <laughs> <laughs> and that's like one of the things that I remember the most about Christmas. Um, but it was always a huge deal. I'm, I'm the youngest of four, and, and so my older sisters would be, you know, the elves on the phone when I would call Santa. Oh, and, that's cute. I mean, it was really, really fun. So I always, I love Christmas. Now, were you like in the school pageant shows? I was already as a kid, much like your guest host, uh, performing. So I remember doing major shows when I was like eight or nine so I, I was kind of probably doing regional theater from from then because we didn't really have Christmas pageant well and they were like uh, we, we need you to play Mary and your agent's like she's booked booked and blessed <laughs> she's on the road yeah. <laughs> is this an equity production uh, it's third grade pageant <laughs> so then no <laughs> All right, Pasadena Playhouse holiday show. Um, that's not your only holiday show that you have done. Uh, you appeared yeah. as Cindy Lou Who in the Off Broadway one person show, um, Who's Holiday? Uh, what was your creative process in putting together a character that we know and love, but we don't really know that much about? And then we see her in the future. Where do you start to build a character like that? Well, what was great about what, what Matthew Lombardo wrote is that it really had, other than the lore of the Grinch, she had a completely different life. Her life went off the rail. <laughs> and so, you know, I I don't have experience in jail, knock on everything, or <laughs> with, with illegal substances. Um, they even had to teach me how to use a who bong. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was a fun day at rehearsal. Uh, no, I mean, the, the hardest thing, honestly, was that that show is completely in rhyme. Oh, my and God. there's no one to bail you out. So there were wow. many times that I would mess up a line and then have to create my own rhyme. <laughs> rhyme <laughs> with the wrong line that I had just said. <laughs> well, that was the hardest thing. And it's really, if, I tell everyone, if you get the chance to do a one-person show, do it. It will you will be scared shitless, but it will be the best thing you do. They, they would push me out on stage every night because I was like, I can't do it. I can't go. And then once I was there, I was fine. But uh, I ended up loving her. And I love that show because it is so body and so funny. Yeah. Then it was also so heartbreaking. And it, it was just like the perfect little holiday nugget. And I really hope I get to do that again. Oh, I'd I would love, love to, to see that. Here. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's so great. Where, where did that idea come from? It just... I that mean... was Matthew Lombardo, the playwright. He had written this piece, I think, in a, in a smaller form, um, with, uh, and Carl Andrus had directed that smaller piece, I believe. And so then he expanded it, and originally we were going to go out of town with it, and it just so happened that the West Side Theater off-Broadway opened up, and and I was lucky enough to to be asked to do it. Um, but it was all his idea, and and it hadn't been done before, which I loved as yeah. well. So it was kind of in process, and uh, it was just a really great group of people. And and yeah, I, I ended up just loving that show so much. Well, I know, like we talk a lot about Broadway, but Off Broadway is equally full of just absolute yeah. nuggets yeah. of amazing theater and acting. Well, and sometimes you're able to do things that you can't do on Broadway. Yeah, yeah, Correct. which is why people should try Off Broadway shows. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, things like Emoji Land, that everyone went Emoji Land. Yeah. That was the most stacked cast. Yeah, right. I've ever been a part of, and it was so fun and so incredible but that was never you know that wouldn't have gotten done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On, on broadway and it was, it was so i i love off broadway it's a little less pressure and you can really do some amazing amazing stuff yeah for sure i mean you think back to shows like little ha little shop you know like would little shop have ever become the hit it was if there wasn't yeah. an off broadway to, to no. display it right yeah completely. yeah um, all right, last time you were here, we talked extensively about your theater career, uh, but this round, we got a lot of questions about your screen work this time, so I'm going to sprinkle in uh, among this interview, just little, like, spill the TV tea. Uh, uh, since the show is in constant repeats, repeats, what was that? Repeats. Repeats. <laughs> repeats. <laughs> Look, I'm off Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> you just got, you just entered shock all of a sudden. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, the show is in constant repeats right now, um, and some of the leads are doing an episode by episode 
episode recap, which is very interesting. Um, but you are on an episode of Charmed. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I am 92 years old and have been doing this forever. <laughs> I was very lucky when I first moved to Los Angeles. I went to UCLA because I had a job performing in the shows at Disneyland. <laughs> so I chose to go to UCLA because I wanted to be a Disney performer. Yeah. Um, and I ended up getting a lot of television work. And Charmed was one of the first guest starring roles I had had. I had done a series and... That was a spectacular failure. And so I started <laughs> stuff. And I loved Charmed already. So to get to do this, it was a really fun role. And I look at it now, though, because they are going back. And yeah. so many people get me on social media going, is this you? <laughs> like, this baby. But it was so great. They were so nice. And yeah, I... I I still love that show. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a great show. Not the reboot, but <laughs> the original. Yeah, yeah no, the original yeah, yeah, yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, I but, didn't even. I haven't even seen the reboot. Yeah, oh, mm. yeah. um, but it was a huge show when it mm -hmm. came out. It was so so popular. But now we find out like all the tension that was going on 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 the set and and the drama. Did you experience any of that, or it was just a really positive experience? And you must have been nervous at being kind of your first big show. Um, you know, I wasn't too nervous. Um, I remember Alyssa Milano being so nice. Yeah. Uh, Rose McGowan was already on the show at that point, so I think some of the tension had I think a couple of people had left. <laughs> I love you said a couple I, of people. We know who. <laughs> I, I saw nothing. I had a blast. I had a great time. So I didn't get any of the drama and, and was there, you know, every day with them and never saw it. They were so kind. Um, I remember especially Alyssa was very, very kind. I've heard that, that she's very, very sweet. Um, now, with your list of all these TV credits, is there a show that sticks out in your mind as your favorite experience or a role that you're like, you know, that was a fun guest spot. I would have loved to have come back and explored the character more or the show cast more. Um, I mean, there are a couple. The first one was uh, Homeland I loved because I got to do multiple episodes mm -hmm. and it was so not what people think I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was so great to, to be able to just do a, a drama and... Because comedy is so much harder. So hard. Especially <laughs> on TV and film. Yeah. Because it has to be so contained and, mm -hmm. and it just has to be planned out within an inch of its life. Um, so getting to do a drama was actually very freeing. And I, I love Mandy Patinkin and um, got to know him on that. And so I loved Homeland. I was already a fan. And then honestly, my favorite, one of my favorite jobs is, was a pilot that never aired for ABC. And that's what happens to us is we'll do a pilot and you think, oh, this is a show that's going to make me a TV star and, yeah. and then it doesn't get picked up. And sometimes those are incredible shows that people work so hard on in front and behind the camera that nobody ever sees, which is the it's kind of like akin to workshops for Broadway. I've been involved in some workshops for Broadway that I'm like, this is better than anything I have seen. And it just doesn't make it, whether that's money or Producers, you know, it, it, it is really heartbreaking. So there is that side to both of uh, Broadway and TV as well. But yeah, I, I, I love the shows that I get to, to go on for a few episodes. And I've been lucky that, that I get to, uh, to do that quite often. But yeah, it's, it's really fun. I love it. I've, I've always been most respectful of the actors that can go back and forth yeah. from oh, yeah. from stage to screen to I mean and TV is different from film of course yeah. too so how is that for you I mean is it is it is it easy or seamless now or was it ever um, I mean I think because I was lucky enough to start it so young it wasn't a big deal to me mm -hmm. um, I my first television series I got I, I had never been on TV before and then I was on 22 episodes of a series and I learned so so much from that and so I don't feel like it, it and being so young I think I was like 19 or 20 like you just go okay this is what we're doing um, <laughs> and yeah. so it wasn't a big deal for me um I mean now shooting a multicam uh like a sitcom is so much like theater because there is an audience yeah there. yeah there and I when COVID was happening, I was shooting uh, The Crew with Kevin James, which is another, I love, loved getting to do a bunch of uh, episodes for them. And I remember COVID happened and we had to shoot an episode where the audience wasn't there. And it's, it's crazy because you feed off of that yeah. like theater. Yeah. Um, and often, you know, anything else that doesn't have an audience, it is hard because especially comedy, you can set up a joke and do it and then there's silence. <laughs> 
and for sure they're like, to die. Yeah. <laughs> <Literally, yeah. laughs> so hard. And you know, the, the, the thing that is, I think the only thing that was difficult, especially now uh, getting to do it more often in TV and film is that the performance isn't up to me. It's up to the editor yeah. and the director, you know, and producers, because I don't get final say on, oh no, that take is better, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, you can say, hey, I really like that. And everyone will be like, uh-huh, great. <laughs> but and so that's yeah, yeah, thanks. Because theater, even though it's, yeah, thanks. <laughs> theater is very collaborative and you, you have somebody, an associate giving you notes all the time. And it's still, you're the end product, really, is what the audience sees, you know? Um, and so that that's something that took a lot of getting used to. To be what? like, wait a minute, that that wasn't my reaction. And sometimes <laughs> it it's not always favorable, and you look, and you look like a crappy actor. <laughs> <laughs> but because, you know, it's just just how it goes. Well, and there's also that thing as actors, we love to feed off on notes that we're given because it means that people are paying attention to what we're doing and offering feedback. And then you know, you take the note on a film. If you do well, they don't say anything. They're like, great, next yeah. next take, <laughs> next scene, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Great, fine, whatever. It's like, can I get a little, like, mm -hmm. that was great. No. It's, yeah, it's so, you know, it's so quick, and there's so much money riding on it that it's just, you have to be uber prepared. You don't want to be the one messing up your lines and holding up <laughs> the, the shot. It's it's really, uh, it's just go, go, go. And, and most of those shows that have been on for a long time, if you guest star on, like, a procedural, like a Law & Order or something, it's a machine. Yeah. They know exactly how it's shot. They know exactly and what to fast. do. So yeah. you, you really don't have time. You have to do your prep work way before. Okay, little holiday question. Worst holiday gift you ever got? It was like the worst or the strangest gift? <laughs> the worst? I've never gotten a really bad holiday gift. I've got plenty. Of I, mean, I, I, yeah. I got a lot of gifts, um, <laughs> like at the stage door. I would get a lot of gifts, and the worst one I got was an ear of corn. Oh. Not anything to do with shocked. It was just <laughs> what? Ear, yeah, I got a bag of ears of corn with no explanation. That's so weird. That is f weird. <laughs> and I was like, "Thank you." Okay. Uncooked. Yeah. Did you cook yeah, it and eat it, or were you just like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no. no. corn? I teach you very early, you like anything, and and kids. And, and older kids, if you're making things for us, we don't eat them. Yeah, that's because just... they tell yeah. you very early, you just can't. Yeah, no, that's sad. And corn. So and the, and the corn. Kids, kids, kids would be like, somebody brought me cookies, and we'd, uh, 10 people would like die for them. And, like, oh, God, yeah. God. <laughs> and me, I never say no to a cookie. I don't yeah, care right. what. Uh, and, and they look amazing, but we're just not... Yeah. You never know. Leslie, I'm going to bring you corn on Thursday <laughs> to the show. <laughs> you're like, What? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe supply an explanation yeah. this time. <laughs> I'm not going to put anything. I'm going to send corn backstage. Can you imagine that, that stage hand is like, what the hell? Oh, shuck. Um, okay, Passing His Playhouse Holiday Spectacular features you with Marianne Hugh, Jason Michael Snow, and George Salazar, uh, co created and directed by Tony nominee Sam Pinkleton. What is it? Is it a musical? Is it a variety show? What's happening? Because social media, it tends to make you believe that it's a few different things. Sure, and that's exactly what we want. Okay. Uh, it. I can tell you this. It is about four people who work at the Pasadena Playhouse, and this giant, much like one of those big shows in New York with 65 people and animals and flying sleighs and all that, uh, is supposed to be what you're going to see at the Pasadena Playhouse. The curtain goes up, and that is not what you're getting. You're getting <laughs> for people who then have to recreate that themselves. Oh, I love it. Oh, what a great idea. With what is available to them. And if anybody was going to pull this off, it was Sam Pinkleton and Randy Blair who wrote it because it is so... You can tell my voice is, is crazy today on the, on the day off, because not because we're singing a ton. It's because we're laughing so hard every day and i'm very uh excited to get an audience because we're kind of like is it just us are we are we crying laughing thinking funny is anyone else gonna think this is funny? i think they will um it's really hysterical also has some heartwarming moments um and it is for if you love holiday shows you'll love this if you hate holiday shows you will love that <laughs> so it's like a show within a show Either way. it's like a dash of waiting for guffman it's very it's very much waiting for guffman oh, i love it things go wrong you know it, it it's that 
Yeah. Uh, there are people going in and out of doors. And <laughs> I, it is literally, there's some audience participation. Oh, oh. great. Uh, some Look out, Alexander. <laughs> some Dolly Parton involvement. Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Dolly and Christmas. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 that's really all I can say. But But you should go in thinking you're going to see a spectacular. Oh, I, I, I cannot wait. Um, and the cast is so diverse. And seeing your social media, I mean, you guys are laughing at social media. There was a post you did. They were at a restaurant or something. And one of your cast members put up your pictures on the Apple TV. Somehow, like, acted. George Salazar, our amazing arranger for Kuka, we were at lunch across from the Playhouse. And they had a screen that, and George saw that the Apple TV the password was up on the screen. So I don't get my back no and my face is on the screen. And then George just started pulling pictures of everyone and putting them up on the screen. And everyone else in the restaurant was like, what? Who is that? <laughs> and I, yeah, so it's very much uh, a group of cuckoo nut people. And I, I don't think I've ever had this much fun. Oh, that's... Rehearsing, which is really great. Oh, I was going to ask, how has the rehearsal process been? Because I know it's like a jam-packed rehearsal schedule. Like I said, this this is like your only day off. How has the process yeah. been, been for you? Amazing. So fun. I mean, we had no idea what was going to be and nothing had been planned. I mean, things had been planned. But in 10 days, we put this together and it has just been the most... 10 days, Jesus. That's crazy. one of the things that I love about living in Los Angeles and doing theater out here is the microscope is not on you and Pasadena is just obviously they won the Tony this year it's one of the best regional theaters it really is ever. really is and and the support that we get there and this and Jenny Feldman the artistic director who I've known forever has such a great eye and has really gotten some some cool things uh to happen at the Playhouse in his tenure and this it's one of them to be able to get support to be like, you know what, we're just gonna let you guys play and we'll fully support it. And it's been so nice to do something that, that again, isn't, you know, a lot of stuff in New York is, is constant worrying about budgets and constant worrying about how long is this gonna run. And, and in Los Angeles, you don't really have that. Right. And it's just so nice to just be able to do your jobs and not worry about the other stuff. And that's why I often find that shows out here are sometimes a lot better than what you see in, in, in bro on Broadway or, or anywhere else. I don't know, it just, it, it's just more fun to me and the artist really gets to shine. What I also love about LA Theater too is is the audience. You know, you uh, audience is such a grab bag of e other entertainment people that are just mm -hmm. so supportive and glad to be there. Um, and then just you know, theater goers, and it's just it's so diverse, especially at Pasadena Playhouse with such a oh, long yeah. history. Um, the audience yeah. is is part of the show, like yeah. that, that energy uh, for sure. Okay, little holiday talk. Your favorite holiday song and your least favorite holiday song when it comes on, you just want to turn off the radio. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, my least favorite, and I don't know why. Is that Paul McCartney <laughs> simply having one what about Christmas? The time between that and Elton John step into Christmas with my Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> step into whatever that is. And, um, my favorite. Who? Well, I mean, I'm 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 a have have yourself a merry little Christmas. Okay. Like fan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I, that's, that's a great one. Such a such a great one. But a lot of the newer ones are not so great. <laughs> I mean, can, can we get your take? And I, I don't know if you can give your opinion on Cher's new Christmas album, <gasps> Smash or Pass. I love. Okay. <laughs> Me too. I love. I mean, we listen to it warming up. <laughs> I love. I mean, it's questionable. Like DJ, turn on this. Christmas yeah. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like no what? One in the club is gonna be like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, else, you know? I just. I love. I saw a thing yesterday that. Dolly Parton, who's 77, had like the number one country album. Mm. Cher, who's 77, yeah. had the number one Christmas album. And Brenda Lee, yeah. who's 78, Rocket Around the Christmas, yeah. went back to number one. Yeah, no album. kidding, they're, huh? They're still tied. <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing. I love it. <laughs> okay, some TV show tea. Um, people are asking about your experience on The Good Wife, which we know is such a great show. Time. I, it's one of those shows, too, where if you were in New York and a Broadway person, you yeah. were on 100%. at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so everybody watches to be like, oh, my gosh, oh my yeah. gosh. I loved it because my 
scenes were with Juliana Margulies oh. and Stalker Channing. Oh. Oh. Wow. And yeah. I, I know, right? And I was like, that's oh. bingo. <laughs> bingo. Yeah. So fun. Again, like a great cast of people who were all theater people. Um, uh, just a well oiled machine. Alan Cumming was there, and then I worked oh. with him again later um, on on Instinct. Yeah. And, and I had done a couple uh, musical workshops with Alan as well, and he's just phenomenal. Um, no, I loved it. Oh my gosh, I loved the show and uh, watched it religiously and, and still watch it whenever it's on. Mm-hmm. Reruns. Love it. Okay, more TV show tea. Uh, Transparent, you were part of the musical uh, finale, which it was, was epic. Mm-hmm. Um, and that show was special for so many different reasons. Yeah. Uh, what was your experience like doing that? Mixing you know, that literally was- both worlds. Yeah, it was a crazy experience. I had been hired to do like six episodes in their final season, and then things happened yeah. on that show, and yeah. they had to take a break. So then they, and so that kind of went away. But that's they devastating. Yeah, and they regrouped and said, "Listen, it's not going to be uh, six episodes. We're actually now just going to do a two and a half hour musical." And you know, for for me as an actor, it's a bit of a bummer because yeah. then I'm like, oh, I'm hardly in it versus, you know, you get to do a lot of stuff. But just being there and getting to, we had workshopped the musical aspects of it for like a couple of months. Um, just getting to be with that group of people and see them get the closure they deserved right. for that show was so heartwarming. And I had a blast and also, you know, every time I see Judith Light, she she remembers your name. She knows she's just the best person. That's amazing. On the yeah. I mean, how many people has this woman met? Oh, I in know, her right? Career? Especially uh, Judith yeah. Light. Yeah. She's fantastic. She's really the best person on the planet. Mm-hmm. And so to spend a month with her was was worth it alone. Um, but I had a, I had a really great time, and it was yeah, kind of melding of both worlds yeah. of of seeing. Uh, and I've been lucky to do some musicals on screen. And and it is really cool. It's totally different. You know, you really have to pace yourself because you're doing musical numbers eight, nine, ten times. So it's it's a different beast. But uh, yeah, I I really had a great time. And and really seeing that cast kind of uh, again get that closure was really cool. Uh, um, you uh, have talked about recently on a podcast, Oh My Pod, you guys, uh, about the ups and downs of being an actor. Uh, and talking about, you know, you take roles, that's a pleasure to take any type of role. Um, can you expand on that a little bit and talk about, you know, like like you've discussed, you've had some some disappointments in your career. Um, we know COVID was difficult, and then we know right after COVID, you know, yeah. got a little time, and then we went into an actor's strike. Yeah. Um, so talk about how you kind of get through that mentally, emotionally, um, and even, you know, <laughs> financially. It's just, it's a really tough um, thing, but you you talked about uh, being an actor in such a beautiful way, and so it's like you know sometimes you take the gig that you need to take the gig, and yeah. it shouldn't come with judgment, it shouldn't come with any other baggage. It's like we are working people, and we should be happy to be taking work. Yeah, it's a, you know it's such a weird thing. I I think because I had been in London before, I had not I, I had auditioned and come so close to so many Broadway shows, but because I lived in California, I loved my life here. I got to Broadway so late, mm. but when it finally happened, it meant so much to me that the idea that anybody would take that for granted was insane to me. And when I got there, I did see many people, a lot of whom were younger, who would just call out of their shows, who just didn't want to do it. And I look, I get it <laughs> to some degree, but because I had fought for so long and it I, I finally was there. I was not missing shows. I was. It took me ten months to call out. They had to finally be like, "Can you please take a day off?" <laughs> it just, I said I was going to become <clears throat> involved with everything, and and then when you're not in a Broadway show, for me, I had always done regional theater. That has been the best experiences for me and the best roles that I get to do. So when I wasn't in a Broadway show. I'm going to go over here and, and do a show in wherever. And that got some flack. And, and I found that with everybody, that if a Broadway person, a Broadway person right. then goes to do a different role or, or a, you know, like a festival show or a regional theater, there are so many people that were like, you shouldn't be doing that. And that's so dumb. Yeah. 
because work is work is work. And I'm not going to get to play Aldonza on Broadway, uh, but I can sure do it yeah. down the street. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's just this thing of, of Broadway being the end all be all. And it is not, especially these days, regional theater, community theater. Like it's so important to just keep theater going that if you, if you need to make insurance leaks or if you just want to play a role, right. who cares where you do it? And nobody should be judging you for that. So uh, I, I did find that part of Broadway a little weird because honestly on the West End and in London, what I loved was that there is no difference between a, a theater person, a film person, a TV person. A, it, everybody does everything. And nobody would, would say, oh, Ian McKellen, you can't go and do a panto. And he did. Yes. <laughs> you know, That's it, right. It, it's not a big deal there. And it shouldn't be here. But I, I think people get so hung up on, well, if it's not Broadway, then it's, it's, it's not as good. That's not true. No, and I really, I really appreciate you saying that because I just, there's so many, I mean, you've worked at them, the La Mirada, Sacramento, like the, these yeah. great regional theaters that are incubators of such great work. So yeah. I really appreciate somebody like you who is going to go do those roles and you're not going to deprive people at regional theater of your kind of talent. That's another You know, it's point. so amazing. And, and it makes me happy. And that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. And I try to tell kids coming up in this business, it's just about you being happy because I yeah. guarantee you, you're not going to be on Broadway all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just now, it. I'm not now. I haven't been for a while, you know. So then how do you make your living? You got to find a way and something that makes you happy. And what, you know, if, if that's doing a, a teeny tiny show in your friend's basement, great. <laughs> you know, it, it just, it, it shouldn't matter. And again, like you were saying, the regional theaters, I've been a part of things at regional theaters that had they transferred to Broadway, would have been better than a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I have seen some amazing yeah. regional shows. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because again, the pressure's off. Yeah. You can go, you know what, we're going to do this show this way. Yeah. And if people don't like it, they don't like it. You know, they have to worry about subscribers and things, but it's not the same kind of, you can take big swings yeah. Yeah. in regional theater that you, you can't do. Uh, with corporate theater. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, along those lines, we actually got this question from an actor. Uh, were you concerned taking a role on uh, for Minx? Because Minx is such, um, it's a sexually celebrating show. Um, mm -hmm. And it's graphic. Um, and so yeah. this actor wants to know, were you, uh, did you have any trepidation in being in a show that was so graphic? Not at all. That show is so geniusly written. So, well so good. Uh, love that is. show. Yeah, really good. I, I just love it. And, <laughs> I loved the, the role. You were hilarious. Hilarious. That <laughs> kitchen scene, I wanted to be in the kitchen, like helping out, like I wanted to be there. <laughs> I was so thrilled uh, to do it. And no, I, I wasn't concerned about that at all. For me personally, getting like naked is only a problem for me because I <laughs> am like, I'm so sorry, I don't want you to see this. <laughs> so it's not really my thing, but if I, I mean, look, if I could, then if, if then I would. Yeah, I, 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 it wasn't a thing for me at all. And for me, I'm just, yeah, once you read those scripts and yeah. once you see that show, it's genius and it's just not about that Th that's exactly right you know yeah. it was sold as like it's a sexy show and then you get through the first episode you're like it's about sex but it's not it's yeah. about people's I lives mean, living your passion and yeah yeah it's, it's it such, is, a, good mean, it such a good show such a good show because you go in the makeup trailer and they're like prosthetic yeah <laughs> <it's> everywhere <laughs> it's a dream come true <laughs> that's, I mean, it's just a normal you know and it, and it i got to know the the makeup grew very well because yeah. they had to make up parts of me that I have not seen in years. So it, it was really uh, a special, but they, no, it's just a well-written show and I, I just loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah, uh, really, really good I show. I was supposed to go back and then it changed. I was so oh, fun. no. Oh. I loved I wanted to see the dynamic of that couple. Like, yeah, I wanted that sure. mob family storyline. Yeah. Like, I really wanted yeah. it. That happens a lot in TV. They say, you know, they can't guarantee you episodes, but they say, yeah. like, we're hiring you for three. Yeah. And then you just do the one because then their trajectory yeah. changes. And that's always a bummer, but yeah. I'm happy. I was so happy to do it. 
Um, you are a judge for this year's uh, Broadway World's Next on Stage, uh, which is amazing. Contestants uh, have the ability to go perform at 54 Below, get a scholarship to AMDA, which is huge. Um, what do you think the biggest challenges are for youth hitting the industry, hitting the musical theater industry today? Social media. Oh. It, um, social media and, you know, I, I have got a lot of scrutiny from kids. I don't like bootlegs. I don't care if you watch them, but I don't like them because I feel that it takes creativity away because people are now, kids are now copying exactly what they see on yes. a bootleg from yep. a performer. And their take is missing yep. mm. because they see so-and-so do this from Beetlejuice. I have to do it that way. Yeah. Whereas back in my day, you had, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the tape, the CD that you listen to and you formed your own mm -hmm. performance. Um, and I understand, like, from a financial point, to watch bootlegs, great, watch it. But then throw it out, you know, yeah. and do your own thing. The other thing with social media is, is people are mean. Very mean. Mm. And kids aren't allowed, you know, every, people on TikTok have these, like, top five riffs from Elphabuzz. Well, it's not about that. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, I worry that social media will make people small mm. and will make performers not try things and so i've just really um noticed a lot of of kids that you know this generation is so different but then once they make some decisions performance wise it ends up just being a copycat of something that they've seen so that was that's my biggest challenge for them um i mean people are mean i don't know i could not have done it been a performer at a young age and have people online just being horrible mm. and it's really I, I just I don't know how they do it and it, that's the that's the biggest uh, obstacle I think for them and it, it's it's such a double-edged sword because social media I think has also um, introduced uh, uh, the younger generation to older musical theater pieces Absolutely. Yeah. you know we're seeing clips of Elaine Stritch we're seeing clips of B Arthur and Angela Lansbury yeah. and it's going around so it's like you know that part of it is so great and during COVID yeah. I think a younger generation because we had so many theater performances that were now streaming from mm -hmm. Sondheim yeah. and this generation got to experience that yeah um, that and you know Hamilton came happened. out during COVID too yeah that that part is oh did I leave. No. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, uh, that part's fantastic. And there is so much great stuff about social media. I love social media. Mm -hmm. But there, and there is so much greatness. It's just those yeah. icky parts of it that are hard to navigate. And it's hard for shows, too. If something gets on social media that, that you know, a, a mass of people decide is, is crap, it's, it's tough to get an audience yeah. for yeah. a show. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It just goes to show how important mentorship is, right? Because, you know, it, our it. mentors are the ones that tell us, you know, be yourself. Me Bring too. you to the role, yeah. right? Do you, have, do you have people that, like, you consider your mentors that we would oh know? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. And I'm very lucky. <laughs> some, of the, some of the people. I mean, you know, I've looked up to B.B. Newworth forever, and, and she's given me some incredible advice. And um, my very first television show, the director was Kenny Ortega. Oh, wow. Um, and so for me to have him as my mentor at such a young age, and this is pre-high school musical, um, I had already looked up to him so much. Um, and so to have him as a mentor really taught me uh, a, such a great work ethic. And, it, you know, it's all the, the, the older generation of people that I looked up to um, that have been so gracious. Um, and now, you know, people that are not, not, old, not older, but, um, you know, people that I see that I was such fans of and still are fans of are the nicest people. And I find that the most talented people are the nicest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it just there's no competition with people coming up. And that's why I, I hope to con continue and and kids coming up, younger people coming up. I, I hope that I can give them some. <laughs> some good advice um yeah it's so hard it's so hard i see what they they go through and it just yeah i just want them to be themselves and and for you know it's the only way that theater is gonna keep going is mm -hmm. to try new things and and have new voices 
Well, and having people like you, like you were talking about social media, you've shared on social media, you've shared when things are just not going well. Uh, you shared yeah. the joy, you've shared the frustration, um, and that's so accessible and it's so pleasant to see because it's like, we all have those moments. You know, if an Olivier award-winning uh, actor <laughs> can have a bad audition or just a really low day, yeah. you know, then yeah. we're, we're all going to be okay. <laughs> it's, really, it's really important to share. It makes you not feel alone. Yeah. And, and acting, it can be very isolating, especially if you're not booking, if you're not working. And another thing about social media, you are inundated every day yeah. with people being like, Cats out of the bag. <laughs> just got the, you know. Yeah. And it's really hard, especially if you've been working and working, and it's just it hasn't hit yet. It's really hard to say, even to myself, keep going, keep going. You know, it, it's just like a cycle, and it's it's really difficult. Um, and that's the only that's another part of social media that's that's hard to deal with. But you know, I've learned you just mute certain words and you don't see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, along the lines, and you, you kind of touched on this, we got this question from an actor as well, doing a role like Audrey and Little Shop, being in Guys and Dolls, these are roles that we all know, we've seen multiple times in multiple productions. How as an actor do you take a role? What's the first step in kind of creating the character, making the character your own, while paying homage to what an audience expects? like? What's your first step? Are you highlighting your lines first? Are you revisiting a recording or what's happening? I, I, um, I, any role, I don't look up any footage mm. of anything that's been done before uh, because I want to come at it a different way. And I have luckily had great directors that have gone, hmm. <laughs> Nice try, but... <laughs> uh, You're like, I think Audrey should have a limp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Maybe a peg leg. <laughs> and, and you know, the, the thing about regional theater, and I, and, you know, I did in the last four months, Audrey and Adelaide. Yeah, wow. And I had done them before, and um, it really is, you do want to pay homage to things that people expect from the role, um, especially in a, in a regional theater. Um, but you have to make it your own. And yeah. for me, that is not listening to anyone's recording or seeing old footage, um, because it, I just want to do what I would do. And some people hate it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, that's, that's the gamble is people, if they wanted to see a replica of something, mm -hmm. then that's not what I'm gonna give you. And but you, you know, there are always things like Audrey's voice is so ingrained because Ellen right. Green, yeah, mm. like I mean, that's the dream is to to put your stamp. My college professor would say like like a dog, you peed all over yes. it. It's true. <laughs> put your stank on that. <laughs> there's a role that is so iconic. You have to kind of pay homage yes. to it, you know. Mm -hmm. But you can still make it your own. You can absolutely, and that's the thing about like the bootlegs. I'm like, no, watch them if you to see the show, but then don't copy them. Yeah, yeah. well, because so, the homage is in the words. If it's a good piece, right? So you just exactly you right. go to the script, yeah. go to the exactly words, yeah. Right. Go to the words, go to the lyrics, especially those older shows like Guys and Dolls is just a perfect. Oh show. my God, it's a great and show. It doesn't need updating. It doesn't need, you know, it <laughs> as is like so great. And it's that script is just the best. Yeah. It really is. So I think, again, just make your own and trust in the people that are around you. And again, I've been really lucky to have directors. Um, and at the same time, you got to be open, too, mm -hmm. for them to go, I know you want to do this, yeah. but we kind of need to, to go back to the original version, which is is fine. You know, um, again, regional theater is a different, different beast than 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 Broadway or off Broadway, you know that little shop revival is pretty close yeah. to what it was. Yeah. So you really don't want to mess with something that that classic too much. Um, but we'll see. I mean, there's a really cool Guys and Dolls in London right now that's like so cool. I didn't so, know. You know yeah, cool. the Guys and Dolls in London. I had a friend yeah, went and saw this. It was cool. great, and I so, love that you know, show. So. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just it's my favorite. I think I think uh, Adelaide's my favorite. 
such a great role. Um, I did yeah. that show in regional theater for three months, and I was part of the Salvation Army and during the crap shoot, um, and I was playing the symbols of the Salvation Army, <laughs> and I was losing weight during the production. I was so proud of myself, and then I went to Clang, and my pants fell down <laughs> in front of a 600-person audience. <laughs> ah, it was not too fun. Not too fun. Um, so I got this email. The email literally said, what is Leslie watching on TV? That was the email. No name, no, no, no nothing. What am I watching on TV? So I um, watch, it's very eclectic. Uh, I'm a, I will always watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, what We Do in the Shadows. Yes. Oh, yeah. Love that um, show. Clearly, I'm a massive Star Wars geek. So any of the Star Wars shows or the Marvel shows on Disney Plus, I'm in for all of them. How about Patty Lapone <laughs> coming to the Marvel universe? Yeah, right. By the way, how <laughs> insane is that? Wait, because it's going to be oh, great. I, I'm such a Catherine Hahn. Yeah, fan she's too. amazing. Like, yeah, I cannot wait for that show. Uh, what else? Are, I watch a lot of um, documentaries. Oh. Just watch like the Millie Vanilli documentary. <laughs> what? I watched the Wham documentary. The Wham documentary is fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> so I watch a lot of documentaries. I actually watch a lot of, um, and this is kind of due to my husband, but I watch a lot of sports documentaries. Okay. Because I had um, ACL surgery about ten years ago, right before I went into Matilda, wow. and my husband Jeez. would make me watch these sports documentaries about athletes that were hurt and their mindset even like olympic athletes what no matter what sport it is the mindset was so incredible mm -hmm. to me so i watched a lot of sports documentaries even if i'm not a, a fan of the sport it's just about people's determination yeah and overcoming sports. obstacles yeah yeah it's so yeah it's so got to be very it. similar to for for your to your experience and other actors because it, yeah. that's what it is. It's performance, and you're performing at such a high level, right? Yeah, and yeah. adversity, and and losing games, and having bad auditions are pretty much yeah. the same. Yeah. Like, and, how do you bounce back? Yeah, so and, and I, I watch a lot of of those uh, kinds of documentaries. And and the the physicality, people don't realize a Broadway actor's body goes through cool. so yeah. much abuse every it's single athletic, night, yeah. from running around backstage to cinching yourselves in the costumes <laughs> to dancing to sweating. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if you're in one of those shows that has all the machinery backstage, and oh, you have God. to go through these little spots with your big costume and oh, yeah. <laughs> climbing ladders. It really is. Um, it's really tough. I mean, I'm going to a hot yoga class right after this because <laughs> it really is the only thing that. Yeah these old dancer joints that makes it feel better. My <laughs> husband will sometimes call me grandma wife. <laughs> and the first thing I do is like, <laughs> and you're like, you do eight shows a week. Let's see. Yeah, right. I know, Come right. on, bitch. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He's got it. But yeah, it's funny, like different shows with different uh, injuries. Like the Zorro was all flamenco, and I remember I just couldn't walk on my day off. Oh, oh wow, yeah. So, it's just like, and then that went away, and then I got a new problem. <laughs> <laughs> I went actually, I, I went to a doctor uh, last year in New York, and I had broken a toe or something, I don't know. And he goes, okay, well, list off your injuries. And I was like, toe, I have this knee replaced. And, I got this. and he goes, what do you do for a living? I was like, musicals. <laughs> the dangerous sport we didn't even yeah, know about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you've got a lot of injury. Yeah. <laughs> Cause of death, musical theater. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Complications and, to and musical the theater. Show at the Pasadena Playhouse is no joke physically for all four of us oh, I can't and wait. the crew. Um, we, it's why I'm drinking Gatorade and not vodka. <laughs> it's really, it's a really, really tough physical show for us. And it's all to get laughs. <laughs> um, I will tell our audience, those who are drinkers, the best hangover remedy is Gatorade Zero and a little vodka because it helps cure. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so good. It's perfect. You just have a little bit of that and you're F fine. FYI, Leslie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> December 24th, after you're done with the show, I want you to make some vodka with your Gatorade Zero. After I'm done with yeah. the show, yeah this, yeah, this is one of those shows, and most shows are these days, where. Uh, even at night, you're like, I just need to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Leslie, what is your New Year resolution? Oh, I think to be kinder to myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's very selfish, but I need to be sometimes. I think it's just to be kinder to myself because I think as an actor, there's so much self-talk that's bad yeah. that we all do to ourselves. So that's one for me. And just, I think just, keep doing things that, that make me happy. 
and saying no to things. Mm. That's... I'm a big, I'm a big mm-hmm. young person, and it's really hard for me to say no to things. And I've just started being like, okay, what can I handle? What don't I want to do? Yeah, saying no to, to whether that's a job or just people. Mm-hmm. Well, that's exactly right. You know, we have to take care of ourselves. Otherwise, you know, like RuPaul says, if you don't love yourself, how are you going to love anybody yeah. else? Yeah. Um, and you and I have talked about this. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like... <laughs> Some people we just need to say goodbye to because it's not beneficial to our health. And I'm sorry, but that needs to take priority. Absolutely. I mean, it's also part of that is valuing yourself more. And we talked about mm-hmm. that, too. Yeah. When you say no, it's because I value myself enough that I know this is not this is just not a good thing for me. And that's OK. Yeah. And it takes away your energy because I know that, you know, I've read about your involvement and things like, you know, just throwing this in there, the Alley Forney Center in New York, which is very similar to my program that I started here. And I just appreciate you doing that work. But, you know, if we if we deplete ourselves and things that we don't enjoy that aren't important to us, then we don't have the energy to do those kinds of things. No, And that stuff is the most the most rewarding. I I, listen, everything I have hosted Broadway Bears so many times Mm -hmm. and the staggering amounts of money that it raises. Yeah. It, it, it's the most incredible. So like BCEFA, all those things, like you said, like Alex Bernie Center, it's stuff like that that you want to have energy right. for because that's important. It's way more important than my dumb <laughs> career. You know, like that's the good stuff. So you, you want to you wanna be present for all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and finally, Leslie, what is your message to your fans? Because they love you, girl. They love you. You know how many comments I got? It's like, I love her. I love her. I love her. I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> oh, that is the best. And truly. I love them. I love them. And I I, I, I can't wait to, to do another show which has a stage door because I love meeting all these people. And I, it means so much to me that I have any fans. <laughs> um, it, it just is the coolest thing. That, that people get it, that people enjoy what you do. And the message to my fans, I always, I will always call um, people sequins because they shine no matter if they're on the floor. Right side <laughs> up, not on the floor. <laughs> I'm going to borrow that and copy that. I love that. Because I've been on the floor many times. <laughs> You're just a sequin. <laughs> just a sequin. I always call like anybody in the fan, I'm like, you're a sequin to me. I love it's that. It's true. It's like you can, you know, literally be knocked on the floor and you can still get up and and shine and and that's always been my message and like cabaret shows or whatever it's why i call myself queen not because i think i'm great it's because i feel like everyone should be able to give a title themselves Mm -hmm. that they like because somebody else will give you a name (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. i I think just that is to just keep being themselves and i just love every everybody that i meet and people are so kind and that's the best, the best part of, again, best part of social media is yeah. the cool people. I love that. Be a sequence. I know, right? I'm a sequin. <laughs> well, you know what? Now I'm going to call myself a sequin yeah, because, like, yeah. I've been a fan of your talent, but like Alexander said, I've never gotten to meet you. I've never really gotten to see who you are, and this has such been such a, a pleasure. Yeah. Like, I'm just smiling the whole time. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Thanks. Yeah, oh, well, hopefully, you know, uh, our paths will cross. Yeah, oh, I'm it's sure. A crazy, it's a crazy Broadway season. There's so much. Yeah. coming in and, and what's happening is for those of us like during the strike I did a ton of workshops in New York I'm back and forth all the time and now it's kind of like a backlog of, of shows that are, have been ready to go for a while so it's it's a really exciting time I, I think this is the most original musicals that has ever opened. yeah I think so yeah yeah, yeah. Think? yeah. yeah. this next year's Tony Awards will be fierce yep. oh my I, oh, <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> and I have some friends that <clears throat> Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of like, I don't know. I thought this was going to be my year, and it's it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's really tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like the Golden Globes that were just announced. Oh my it's lord! Like, how do you pick one? It's like Sophie's Choice in every category. It's crazy. Yeah. And I and I can't wait to see. I, I'm I'm back in New York in in January doing a couple more workshops, and uh, I can't wait to see some. Some yeah. Stuff that's, yeah. That's coming up in this well, and we're going to talk sure. about what to what, what to see this winter. Um, <laughs> Leslie, where can people find and follow you? Oh my God, <clears throat> at Queen Leslie with just an I. I don't have an E in the end of my name. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know my mom did that. <laughs> uh, at Queen Leslie, everywhere. Instagram, uh, X. Is that what they call it now? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I try and TikTok, but I, I I'm just. You promise more TikToks. I you know, promised. I keep promising. Yeah. And so I get sucked in. I watch them every day. I wake yes. up and try to watch funny 
like animal TikTok. Yeah. That's how I want to start my day is laughing. <laughs> and so that is the first thing that I do is watch animal TikTok. That's this is, good advice for life. <laughs> but I just have to tell you, this is how different we are. You're watching animals. I'm watching kids fall down. It's my obsession. I just, I laugh so hard and it's so 100%. mean. Yeah. But like when a toddler, oh God. You, you, be a sequin on, floor, <laughs> be a sequin on the floor, kid. Be a sequin on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Care. Care. Um, and, if, back up. and if you're in Southern uh, California, even if you're not, come out to Pasadena Playhouse Holiday Spectacular, <laughs> December 14th to December 23rd, PasadenaPlayhouse.org. Uh, get your tickets because I know that they're going so fast. I didn't even get a plus one. I got a me. <laughs> like, okay. I, you know, because it is selling. It, it yeah. really, really is. That's good news. Great. It's great Look at the cast. Yeah. And, and the cast is incredible. And the people, the, the promos that they've been putting out. Yeah. Um, are really funny. Check those out. So funny. That's playoffs. why I was like, uh, okay. We see some of the characters. We, we, we get to meet <laughs> some of the characters. So now, so now go to Pasadena Playhouse on Instagram. Yeah. And there are some little uh, snippets of us. They're very waiting for Guffman, and they're so yes. funny. I love it. They're I love so it. I love funny. it. And you'll really get the sense of the show <laughs> if you go to their their social medias. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited for people to see it. I think it's going to be so fun. Um, Leslie, what a joy this has mm -hmm, been. Absolutely. Um, like Michael said, my face is just spread open with smiles. Yeah. It's my always so hurt. fun talking to you. <laughs> I remember I, I interviewed you uh, for Metrosource magazine, and you were putting together IKEA furniture. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm sorry, I'm a few minutes late. I was putting IKEA furniture together. That's how come down to earth you are. And then last time you were on, we talked about your first entrance to Pasadena Playhouse. I guess she had like all these CVS bags with her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Obsessed. Always. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm just so bougie. It's like I could have like a three hundred dollar dress in a, in a yeah. Ralph bag. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, CBS, be a sequin. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Be a sequin. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please. I can dance like these. I'm so classy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leslie, we're going to let you go to hot yoga. Um, <laughs> what a pleasure. And um, I will see you in just a few days. Please say hi. Yeah, I, I will. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye, Leslie. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so fun. Oh my God, that was a blast. So fun. That, you know, that is the thing about what I find, and not to be negative about anybody, but like, oops. Spending time with theater people, they are just, I don't know, maybe it's the humility of not like their platform is not always like all over the world or whatever. It's on a stage and it's that live audience that night. It kind of puts it in the right, I don't know, the right size. But, um, you know, yeah, all the, that's why I love meeting people because they're just like Leslie. They're just down to earth, but they're so talented. And I think it's all the hard work. You can't just be, you know, like, you know, we have TikTok stars that are now film stars. It's yeah. like, you know, it just yeah. happens so quick. Then you film a movie and then you get, you know, how much play from it. But doing the shows, doing the rehearsal, we know how grueling rehearsal process can be. Yeah. And then as an actor, you're self doubting yourself, you're learning things about yourself. Um, it is hard work. And we know people that work hard have good, ethics yeah yeah that's right <laughs> that's um, right okay so i'm gonna just reiterate every year you get to go see just about every broadway show um you've ingratiated yourself with uh, a number of a-list names from broadway getting to meet them and share time with them so what i wanted you to do was if you're going to broadway this winter what are the top five shows whether you're a theater person whether you're not a theater person that we should be on the lookout for all right well so the first one is the, the the big hit this year. The one that is the big ticket is Merrily We Roll Along. And, you know, how can you miss with the Stephen Sondheim show? And it's so interesting because it follows these three friends um, in backwards yep. order for 20 years. And so, yeah, it's just such an interesting concept, like any Stephen uh, Sondheim show is. And uh, But, of course, then it stars Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, Jonathan Groff, one of the most beautiful men on the planet, yeah. and uh, also an incredibly nice person, um, and Lindsay Mendez, who is fantastic as well. And, I mean, I just, I have tickets. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Um, so, merrily we roll along. If you can get a ticket to that, you got to see that. And people don't realize some of, the, uh, some of Sondheim's biggest songs are from there. Not a Day Goes By, mm -hmm. uh, Old Friends. Yep. Um, and the album has been re released. It was released uh, November 1st. And from what I've heard from production notes and from people that have gotten sneak peeks, um, it really is acting based. Yes. Rather than it's not the kind of show that's like, okay, now we're in for musical theater, jazz right. hands. It yeah. really is about these and three characters. And they didn't characters. put like, they didn't necessarily cast three of the 
great singers. Yeah. I mean, Daniel Radcliffe's not uh, known for singing. You know, uh, he uh, does quite well. I <laughs> but he does. Yes, yes he, he does, does quite well. It's a, that's such a nice surprise, which is so true about you know truly talented people, right? Like they can step up and do that stuff. It's a challenge. It's like, yeah, it's a challenge. How scared must he have been? Oh my God. And to do it in front of a live audience of people, you know, and I think like what Leslie was saying about regional theater is like when you're on Broadway, like every person sitting there hanging on every note. And they're like, okay, Harry yeah. Potter, prove sing it for to us. me, prove it to me, yeah, prove yeah, yeah, to yeah. me that you deserve to be on the stage. Yeah, like New yeah. York people are tough. I yeah. mean, they know their theater and it's not like nasty or mean, but it, well, it can be mean. But, um, but no, they're just really, really tough. They see a lot of great theater. And what I love about Merrily We Roll Along is um, the three of them have done interviews. They have such chemistry, and each of them have said it's been one of the most powerful um, uh, colleague experience. Yeah. In fact, that they've really bonded. Mm-hmm. And they started off Broadway too. They did that smaller production of it, and it was such a big hit that they brought it to Broadway, yeah. which is so interesting. So um, you know me, I have to be a little devil's advocate. Yeah. Here. Um, tickets are going for about four to five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's tough. It's because we have a big Hollywood person, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh huh. Um, it's a Sondheim show that. Is often done, but not well. Right. Merely, we know Merely Rolong has had issues with script. It's mm-hmm. just, it's it's a little clunky, and I guess they've nailed everything with this production. Yeah, yeah. And Sondheim passed away, you know, obviously. So there's a lot, but four to five hundred dollars for a I ticket. I know. I know. So if you want to go to Sondheim and you don't want to pay that much money, then go to Sweeney Todd or go to the new the new show that's off Broadway that he yeah. d- didn't finish until yeah. you know after, by the time he died. But you can get those tickets. <laughs> for last. But I want to know from your perspective, should we be charging four to five hundred dollars for a Broadway ticket? Yeah, you know, I'm on. I'm in. I, we brought her up before. I'm in the Patty Lapone world where you're just like, you know, there's got to be a way to do theater. Everybody should have access. Yeah. And and they they try in a lot of ways to you know especially when a show gets a little long in the tooth like it's been around for a little bit and it's not so intense, um, then you can go and you can get the deals um, from other places. But you have to have to be a really active consumer um, with Broadway shows. But I tell people when you go to New York, you know, try the TKTS lines, try the deals online, like look for deals because a lot of the shows you know they they offer pretty steep discounts once they've been around for a while. So, um, and you get some good seats because there really aren't bad seats in a lot of the Broadway theaters. So, so next show. Yes. I threw in Wicked because. I it's, love that you did this, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's Wicked's 20th anniversary year. I mean, Wicked has been on Broadway for 20 years, deservedly so. I mean, I'm somebody who. Okay, it's let's talk one about of my this. favorite shows. How many times have you seen Wicked? I've seen it 20. So 20 and 20. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it 20. Well, a lot of it was because, you know, like running a nonprofit in LA, like we, when it was here for so long, because it was here, here. for ye- a couple yeah. of years. Actually, Shoshana Bean and. Um, we love Shoshana. Uh, and Adina Espinosa. And, 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 Espinoza, Espinoza, yeah. you know, these people, like, they were some of the people that played those roles the longest because L.A. had a permanent cast for a while. Um, but um, And also, I have a friend in it. So, like, I, uh, somebody that I actually did theater with when I was in my 20s and in my teens, um, she's in, in, in the show. So, like, I want people to go see her. She's, she's the understudy for Madame Morrible. She's in the show every night. But That's she crazy. actually plays Madame Morrible and has quite a bit. Um, there was somebody who was starring in the role last year who um, has health issues, so she was out of the show a lot. And so Christiane played the whole Christmas week. And so Christiane Tisdale. Um, well, so, and, yeah, Wicked's it, a great show. It's a great show for people that are not, like, into theater. Yeah. Too. It's very accessible. It's, it's great for kids. Related. You know, yeah. like, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, really wonderful. I'm really glad so that, that you added characters. that. And next year, at this time, we'll have the movie coming out. So Thanksgiving 2024. Part one. Part one. <laughs> so there's two parts. Now, what do you think about the casting of the movie? And I know you don't like to spill tea, but, like, spill some tea. Oh, you know, like, every time I saw them cast somebody, I was really upset because we've had notable debacles like Les Mis. Um, oh, <laughs> and Russell Crowe. Talk about being miserable during And I'm Les just Mis. like, I was waiting for the big lead to be cast that somebody that can't sing you know like mm-hmm. because that, they do that all the time again the like time. Russell Crowe can sing but he can't sing Javert yeah so like why are you putting I mean I understand you want to sell tickets but you had Hugh Jackman you had other people in the movie but this one I think they nailed it you've got Jonathan Bailey as Fierro it's perfect where is his Golden Globe nomination where's his Golden Globe nomination that is I know travesty. best thing in fellow travelers yeah. is Jonathan Bailey yeah um you know, uh, the two leads, I mean, you know, Ariana Grande basically has been workshopping that role with Christian Chenna with her best friend and mentor for years. So it's a perfect casting. And Ariana Grande comes from this huge theater background that a lot of people don't know. Yeah, yeah. She was doing panto. She was at Laguna Beach yeah. Playhouse as a kid. Doing... She works musical homages yep. into her pop songs. Yes. I mean, like, it's, yeah, she's perfect for it. Yeah. And, you know, everybody, the whole cast is just... Jeff Goldblum as the wizard? You know, like... 
I think what's great about that is Jeff Goldblum. That that role is just really about personality, and so like, and it's sweet, but it's a little, it's off. It's kind of kind of odd, and that's Jeff Goldblum, right? Yeah, like, he's sweet, a but he's really he's a little odd. You know, he's always been sort and of like showman. unique, and he's a showman. He's like, I'm doing my Jeff Goldblum yeah. shtick. I'm yeah, like, well, you are Jeff Goldblum, he's and like, nobody know. knows that he's a jazz musician. Like, he plays piano, he does cabaret. Did you he's, see him at rock? Yes, yeah. yes, he's he's brilliant. So like, you get to see another side of him, which is very exciting about the movie. Um, so my next pick was Back to the Future, uh, which came from London last summer. You know, it's still a brand new show. Um, again, I have a friend in it, um, yeah, we'll, Jelani we'll Remy, who will be on on the yep. rocks. Um, but also, Roger Bart is playing um, Doc Brown. I mean, how perfect is that? Casting? I mean, Roger Bart is like if it, it really people that don't know theater as well maybe as we do. Like, if you see a show with Roger Bart in it, run to that show. The producers. He was in the Stepford Wives reboot. He's done a lot of Broadway stuff. Yeah, I thought he was gay until like last. I thought he was gay too. I was like, (laughs) (laughs) Roger Bart wins gayest straight man that ever lived. Him and Stanley Tucci, like, you know, play every gay role. We'll be fine with it. I know. How the hell is Stanley Tucci not gay? So I have to tell Um, you, Back to the Future, I'm so surprised that it was a hit. When I first heard that Back to the Future was a musical, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, I rolled my eyes. I'm like, how are you going to do that? And it's just like, well, I thought it was going to be another another failed jukebox musical, right? That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. It has become a hit Mm -hmm. with critics and an audience favorite. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, because I think what they did, though, is they went to the story and then built out from it. Mm. And they didn't just make it a jukebox musical. Yeah. It has great original songs. So i um, excited about that. And, you know, now that I said I said that about the jukebox musical, I'll skip to Anne Juliet. Um, because Anne Juliet's a jukebox musical, which actually saved jukebox musicals for me. It's, it is the show where they actually, instead of going with one artist, they go with several artists. So there's people like, there's Britney Spears music, Katy Perry music, um, Kesha, Backstreet Boys, and the songs when they pick them, the, you can feel it in the audience when somebody starts singing one of the songs in a part in the show. It's like it was written for that. So that's the only way you can do a jukebox musical well. If the f- songs aren't, you know, if it's not like, you know, ABBA, you know, like yeah. those songs didn't fit. Like they really stretched those songs really? to fit into the, and, it, and you were just sort of like, that, does, that song doesn't work here. But Anne Juliet, it's so, it's the most, it's probably the most fun I've had at a musical. And we actually, my group of friends, we went to London the month before the pandemic hit. And so we were there in February 2020, saw Anne Juliet. After we were done, we were so excited. We were like, this has to come to Broadway. And then the pandemic hit, so it was delayed. But yeah, folks, go see Anne Juliet. So, and that sounds like a good musical you could take your whole family to. Absolutely. And they'll all have fun with it. Like What's the, the storyline? So it's basically based on Romeo and Juliet. So it's Anne Juliet. But what happens is, is when, you know, in, in the play, when Romeo dies, Juliet kills herself. In this one, she goes, well, he's dead. Why should I die, too? Yes! Yes. Thank so God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, so it's very funny. And it's really about Juliet um, realizing who she is and Empowering. determining her own, you know, life and making her own choices. And so it's a very great women empowerment uh, show. Um, and it's just, it's it's hilarious. It's fun. The music fun, like I said. The story's good. So, yeah. Go see on Juliet. Um, and then the last one I picked was Shucked, um, which... Every every time somebody goes to see it and they come out of it and they, they call me about it, they're just like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. That's 100% true. Every yeah. person Everybody. I've talked to. They were yeah. on Good Morning America. They performed on the Today Show. Mm-hmm. I have to be honest, I still don't know what the musical's about. So... Uh, I mean, loosely, it's it's about like it's 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 sort of like I mean, it sounds like Music Man a little bit, only in a in a well, Music Man's like a, a small take town on too, Oklahoma, but it's not. Yeah, no, I mean, it's really just about a small town and characters in it, and there's a con man trying to take advantage of everybody. And, okay. Yeah, so it's sort of that little small town thing. So I mean, I think it's a, sort of like Americana, you know, like and so people can laugh at stuff that they appreciate because you know a lot of us are from small towns, or we at least know people from small towns, or we laugh at small towns. So. You know, there's a lot to laugh at and laugh with, really. And uh, and again, there's somebody great in it that I know named Alex Newell, um, a Alex non-binary Newell. actor who's um, who's played you know all kinds of roles. There's no gender limitations to Alex, and uh, was in Once in This Island and, and played the the basically the mother of the of the of the of the um, the tribe. And, and it's, you know, Zoe's uh, playlist. Yeah, I well. mean, Alex is is a major talent. Their voice, octaves. We're talking about octaves. Oh. 
Yeah, incredible. And and you know we've we've been lucky because we we met Alex like around Glee time when Alex oh. was on the last couple yeah. of seasons around Glee and was doing kind of the fundraiser circuit and singing at fundraisers and stuff before they you know became who they are now. And uh, you know because Glee was a good stepping stone, but you know was in the later years, so it didn't make Alex a star necessarily. But then all these other things, you know, so appreciative. I have to of. tell you how down to earth Alex is. So um, I did uh, Vakaya Cruises mm -hmm. and the talent showed up early and they weren't ready with our rooms, right? So we're sitting at the bar and I spent an hour with Alex drinking a lot. <laughs> Didn't realize who they were. And then their entourage came and then I was like, oh, what well, that's an entourage. Because I wasn't, I was just relaxing. I wasn't uh -huh. putting two and two together. I'm like, that's Alex New. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and we spent the whole week just having fun and partying. Yeah. And um, th they did two shows. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't even know. I mean, like you said, Alex yeah. is so down to earth yeah. and just another theater person that's really humble. And then all of a sudden they get on stage. And what what um what Leslie was saying earlier before, and, and you you know, you talked to me about I've met people. Like last year I went on this Broadway cruise and it was Alan Cumming and it was Kristen Chenoweth and it was um I'm not going to remember everybody's names, but like uh, they just came and hung out with everybody yeah. on the ship. Like there wasn't any the actors were over there. They actually came down during the sing along at night. Alan Cumming <laughs> went up and did a sing along that number. Is so fun. I mean, you know, you're like Michael Servers is hanging around, and you know, my friend and I that I was on the cruise with, uh, we just stood next to him and had drinks and talked forever. Is Michael gay? No, okay. no, he's not. No, he's, he's great on. Uh, Gilded Age, but yeah, he's fantastic on Gilded Age, and you know that's somebody that I, I saw him when he did Sweeney Todd with Patty Lupone, yeah. and I had a friend that knew him, and so we went out afterwards, and then he remembered. He did Titanic with my friend Christiane, who's in you know uh, Wicked that I mentioned earlier, so they know each other, and you know you're just it's it is a very small community, and and so like when thank you for letting me talk about Broadway on on, on, on the rocks today, and because uh, you know I just want to encourage people to go to theater. You just walk away with um, being changed a lot of the time, just. And when we're looking at the diversity of the top five, we have a classic Sondheim show, mm -hmm. which everybody should know Sondheim. Uh, we have a show that's established when it was new. Wicked was like, you know, the new, it's changing Broadway. Now yeah. it's in 20 years. And from somebody who really was a classic, yeah. Stephen Schwartz, but he brought 100%. this new hip musical. Yeah. And then, you know, the trend of movies becoming musicals. We know uh, Devil Wears Prada is coming to Broadway. Mm -hmm. Death Becomes Her is coming to Broadway. Yep. Um, and then we have like the little musical that could. Shocked was a small yeah. little musical. It's like... Is this going to do well? Yeah. And it, has. it just, all, I mean, really, I think it didn't come out with a lot of fanfare. So it really won its audience yeah. by it, being it, so it good. Did. That's yeah. one of those things. Like Back to the Future came with the hype. Yeah. You know, nothing to take away from it at all. But, you know, Shuck didn't have that kind of hype. They didn't have any pedigree. Just a yeah. brand new musical. Yeah. All right, Michael, we have to talk a little holiday with you. Okay. We know you come from an Italian family. <laughs> uh -huh. So what were some of your like favorite family traditions that you grew up with? So uh, I grew up in Connecticut, um, on the shoreline of Connecticut, and uh, I, you know, and just so being down the tough. street from Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> well, my parents <laughs> used to let life. when I was 13, 12, 13 years old. My parents used to let me go on the train in New York City and see that's, shows. That's I mean, what youth on the East Coast does. Yeah, you know, yeah, you get on crazy. the train, go, yeah. go to Broadway. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 13, 12, and in, in, on Times Square, and it wasn't as nice then as it is now. Um, but um, but what I really loved loved about my family because we were Italian, and you know, the Italians kind of stuck out in Connecticut. <laughs> I so, <laughs> anybody that was a little different than uh, Especially with your wasp. dad's personality. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And uh, and so we had other Italian families in town that we spent time with. So Christmas Eve was, you know, we either had Feast of the Seven Fishes or we our family meal was our, I and mean, you're yeah. going to have it next Sunday because I'm going to do my dinner. Yes. For my friends, that's my Christmas present to my friends is like we have our family gravy, which Italians call sauce, and uh, our pasta and all that stuff. And I just really love, for me, you know, I like to be around a table with a group of people that I love. And so, you know, food um, is a big part of that. And, you know, and Christmas Eve was never, we never had the fight about opening presents. Like Christmas Eve was for eating <laughs> and it was like having fish because you're Italian. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then Christmas Day was just, you know, it was just a whole different thing. But it was with my Italian family. Christmas was always with that family. Okay. What are the worst or funniest or oddest gifts that you ever received? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I got... Um, one year I got the shirt that clearly somebody bought when they stopped at like a gas station <laughs> or a car wash and bought a shirt in the car wash gift store. It's <laughs> like California. <laughs> no, it was like, you know, it was like it had Santa Claus on it. And it was like a, it was like the, a shirt that you knew was going to fall apart after it, or you washed it once. And you're like, wow, like, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, probably the worst experience. I mean, the worst experiences. They're always sad, you know. Like it's like a, a family member, like my uncle one year, like who was a you know he's a Vietnam vet and he was really got really messed up in life and he was supposed to be there at Christmas time and he didn't show up, you know. And so you're sitting around and everybody. But that's the thing about the Italian family is you're like, well, no, he's supposed to be here. Where the hell is he? There's no, there's nothing relaxed about that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's probably the worst thing that that ever happened at Christmas is not having somebody show up. But yeah, but family is everything to me. So. Um, even when, you know, when they're fr- my friends, you yeah. know, the chosen family. Yeah. Okay. Your favorite holiday song, your least favorite holiday song. <laughs> oh, my favorite holiday song is David Bowie and, um, Bing Crosby. And Bing Crosby. Yeah. yeah singing yeah. Little Drummer Boy. And, uh, that's absolutely, every time I hear it, a uh, friend just walked in and, and he knows every time I hear that song for the first time, every Christmas I cry. And even the backstory behind it, you know, they oh, didn't yeah. really know each other and Bing Crosby was like. Who, oh, and what? Bing Crosby didn't want to know yeah. David Bowie, and David Bowie, like, yeah, they're completely opposite people. But it shows, just shows you when you know yeah. the worlds collide, it works. Yeah, yeah, you can't go through a holiday without yeah. hearing that song. If you haven't, you need to listen to it. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> when Leslie said Paul McCartney, that's her least favorite. <laughs> Did you almost leave? <laughs> yeah, I, was like, <laughs> I saw your what? face. You were like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I kind of like that song. Because <laughs> it's. Paul McCartney and he's doing something really, you know, strange yeah. for him, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you said the like the worst, the least favorite least Christmas favorite, yeah. song, you know. And I hate to say it because I don't want to offend <laughs> many of my Latino friends, but like. Feliz Navidad has only like Feliz Navidad, Prospero Año. It like says the same words and it goes on for like ten minutes every time Welcome they play it. Welcome to any Mexican song. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And they play it over and over we and over again. We make a good riff and then, then oh. we're done. Then we're eating. Like, so it's not so much that I didn't like the song at the beginning. It's just after you've heard it like thirty times a day and on that Christmas station. Yeah, you're like, oh. So I listen oh, to one hundred three point five like December first yeah. to like January first. Yeah. And it's like, oh, let's be diverse. Let's put out Feliz Navidad. It's like, oh my. Oh. <laughs> not again. Yeah. <laughs> my least favorite is Bruce Springsteen does Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And oh. he's so flat and he's so, it's like, <laughs> Girl, he's not coming if you're going to sing like that. <laughs> um, and then but, they have all that weird talking in it, too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No. No, what is this? what's no. going on in the song? <laughs> uh, what a fun time we had today. Oh, such a good time. Uh, Michael, tell everybody where they can find and follow you. Oh, my Lord. I'm uh, Michael.Ferreira on, on Instagram and, and uh, same thing on Facebook. And I'm really not on uh, I really don't do Twitter or, or, or X or whatever it's called do now. And anymore. Somebody needs to teach me TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Leslie, I get up and I like watch videos to laugh. And yeah. <laughs> so those kids fall down. Mm, that's a good day. <laughs> it's so great. Well, and like she said, the pets. Go with yeah. kids and pets. The ones you hate to work with, but you definitely want to yeah. see them on TikTok. <laughs> that, that is very true. Um, well, that was our kickoff to the holidays. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. And you're going to be back very soon. Um, so. It's always a grab bag of fun here. Every time on On The Rocks. A big thank you to our engineer, Tony Sweet. Our social media clip editor, Alexis Mendez. Um, and you were so taken with our episode with Adam Barry from Kindred Spirits talking about the paranormal and how it helps you through grief which is a very interesting theme so he's coming back for part two uh, we also uh, we're welcoming Jelani Remy currently in Back to the Future and the Grammy nominated Courtney Reed who's currently in Moulin Rouge they're coming on together and of course we have Charles Bush a theater impresario and drag impresario. Amazing. So I'm really yeah. excited about that. Um, his memoirs came out, so read that before he comes on. Please like, share, subscribe so uh, we can continue bringing this fabulous programming coming your way for free, I might add. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sexy, and if you drink, stay tipsy. It's on the rocks. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> this has been another episode of On the Rocks. On Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air. Find everything On The Rocks for free at ontherocksradioshow.com. Subscribe, like, review, and share. Until next week, stay fabulous. <laughs>